Today, an 18-month investigation resulted in charges ranging from racketeering to perjury. More than 40 of the people allegedly involved avoided prosecution by promising to perform community service and refund money. At the center of the story are former college athletes and the agents charged with coercing and corrupting them. Gary Reeves reports. Prosecutors today announced indictments against three talent agents, accusing two of them, Norby Walters and Lloyd Bloom, of conspiring with Michael Francisi to use mob muscle to get contracts to represent top stars of stage and sport. Walters and Bloom used the reputation of Francisi and his efforts as a reputed member of an organized crime family in New York to assist them in obtaining the business and conducting the business of sports agents. The talent agents are accused of using threats in an unsuccessful attempt to take over booking of the Jackson 5's 1981 tour and to influence other acts. They utilize the reputation of Michael Francisi as a member of an organized crime family in order to obtain that business. Prosecutors charge the agents gave cash and gifts to dozens of college athletes in exchange for the right to represent them in future negotiations with pro teams. Players who backed out were threatened. They specifically told certain of the athletes that they would break their legs. Only one athlete, Chris Carter of Ohio State, is being prosecuted for fraud and obstruction of justice. He is now cooperating with the investigation. The government has agreed not to prosecute 43 other college stars who took payments, including Brent Fullwood of Auburn and Ronnie Harmon of Iowa. Carter faces 10 years. The others will do community service and will pay back their scholarships. These indictments are the latest attempt to clean up college football, where the illegal payments had become common. It's getting closer to being cleared up, and uh, like I say, there's still some play, uh, agents out there doing it, but I think that this should scare them and, and put a stop to it. Both the National Football League and the NCAA say they are cooperating with the investigation, which prosecutors say will continue. Gary Reeves, CBS News, Chicago. In Chicago, the defense rested today in the federal trial of two agents charged with preying on college athletes with pro potential. Correspondent Gary Reeves is covering that trial. The fraud and racketeering trial of sports agents Norby Walters and Lloyd Bloom has revealed dramatic allegations of mob involvement in college athletics. Confessed organized crime captain Michael Franzese testified he paid $50,000 cash to become a silent partner in the agency that once represented 44 potential professional football and basketball stars. Bloom and Walters say they broke no laws when they gave thousands of dollars in gifts and loans to top college players, convincing them to secretly hire the agents months before college rules allow. Most of the agents choose to ignore the rules of the NCAA, which they are not bound by. And most of the young men seem to ignore the rules of the NCAA. And what Norby Walters has done has just come along and joined the gang. The agents targeted young black stars like the University of Iowa's running back Ronnie Harmon. With his father present, Harmon recorded a tape as Walters offered a big loan and monthly payments in exchange for the right to a percentage of Harmon's future pro earnings. Now you have to send Ronnie 50 or 100 a month and you should have your pocket money. He now is picking up the money from me. Yeah. And we all also take it gamble. He has to worry about being caught. The agents say they just found a niche in a corrupt system that exploits players for their athletic abilities. Harmon, for example, slid by with a D average, taking classes like billiards and watercoloring, finally dropping out after he led his school to the Rose Bowl. School officials say academics come first. The student athlete must be a student first, an athlete second. Players who tried to break their contracts with Bloom and Walters say they were threatened. Chicago Bear Maurice Douglas testified Bloom said he might have somebody break my legs. Francis, nicknamed the Yuppie Don, told jurors he never threatened players, but did provide the muscle that helped Walters prosper in the music business. Francis says he tried and failed to control the Jackson 5's 1981 tour, but claims his reputation in New York's Colombo crime family was enough to convince Dionne Warwick's manager not to fire Walters. Warwick herself testified there were no threats. The agent scandal and their alleged connection to organized crime has prompted at least 15 states to try to toughen the laws that govern agents, hoping to redeem the tarnished image of college sports. Gary Reeves, CBS News, Chicago.
with it the big bowl games, the traditional New Year's Day matchups of some of college football's finest teams. And not so coincidentally, a new law goes into effect in Alabama tomorrow, creating a commission to oversee agents who represent college athletes. Bill Whitaker explains that is one state's effort to deal with a national scandal. When 12th ranked Notre Dame faces Texas A&M in the Cotton Bowl tomorrow, it will be playing without top wide receiver Alvin Millis. The Texas Aggies will be playing without two starters who lost their eligibility just two weeks ago. The players have been dropped from the roster for signing contracts and accepting money from professional agents in violation of NCAA rules. They are part of a growing scandal that has hit teams in three of this season's bowl games. And the bowl games that you will see on New Year's Day, all of them, all the players that are, have any professional draft status at all and have any professional deal, dealings where they would even have a shot at being a free agent, they're all under contract. Abernathy says he had seven top college football and basketball players under contract before he got out of the business this year. He claims as many as 80% of the nation's top college athletes have signed illicit contracts with agents. 14 players at nine schools have lost their amateur status for dealing with agents this year, a number unprecedented in NCAA history. Most of the agents choose to ignore the rules of the NCAA, which they are not bound by. And most of the young men seem to ignore the rules of the NCAA. The practice is fueled by money. The agents stand to make thousands of dollars when the athletes turn pro. The players, many of them poor and black, get money and cars while still in school. Chuck Foreman, a former all-pro running back, played seven years with the Vikings. He says the practice has been going on for years. Agents approached him his junior year in 1972. Anyway, they break out this suit, this um, briefcase full of money, and they told me to take whatever I wanted. It didn't matter how much it was, and I know there had to be over $50,000 in that briefcase at that particular time. A federal grand jury is investigating sports agents. Indictments are expected. 18 states plan to regulate their activities. And the NCAA is considering giving amateur athletes more spending money to help reduce the temptation. But observers claim the problem is an outgrowth of the billion dollar college sports industry. Makes no sense. You know, the greed starts at the top. Coaches get rich and famous. Universities make millions of dollars. The players, meanwhile, many of them are from circumstances which mean which dictate that their lives are those of indigence. There's too much dollars involved in it right now for anybody to back out of. It, it's bowl time in America, but tonight there's a growing question whether we're seeing the best in amateur sports or professional sports in disguise. Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Atlanta. sports agents and a National Football League player point to the ongoing problem of commercialism and illegal payments in college sports. Two of the agents, Norby Walters and Lloyd Bloom, are accused of offering athletes cash and gifts to sign contracts. And if that didn't work, they allegedly used violent threats. Joining us now live from CBS affiliate KDKA-TV in Pittsburgh is Mike Gottfried, the head football coach at the University of Pittsburgh, and from San Francisco, sports agent and attorney Lee Steinberg. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks. Mike, how bad is the situation in college ranks? I think it's bad, uh, Faith. I think there's some good agents. Obviously, Lee Steinberg, who's on the program, uh, fits that. But I, I, I said often that, uh, and in my opinion, and I know that there are agents right now who are using drugs, money, prostitution to hook young people into corruption. You know, we had 48 people uh, uh, that were mentioned in this particular indictment, and there's a lot more because there's a lot more of those type agents. Has it extended into the high school ranks yet? It has, because as a recruiter now you see that uh, young people really have uh, people representing them uh, as you go into recruiting. So it's something that uh, now maybe people look at it as, a, as an important problem that it is. Lee, how many people are drafted each year? Is it about 300? 336 players in the National Football League and less players in basketball and baseball. Versus how many agents out there, do you know? Well, I think that part of this genesis of this entire problem is this exponential growth of agents. There are probably 10,000 people who call themselves agents. 10,000? Yes, and they may only have a card and no clients, but they still compete to try to sign players. And they move earlier and earlier, as Mike said, to the college campuses. Unfortunately, soon we'll probably see agents at obstetrics wards trying to sign healthy-looking <laughs> babies. What kind of things are the agents offering these kids in order to get them to sign up? 
They offer money, cars, women, loans, and this early signing syndrome is very destructive. The athlete thinks of himself as a commodity to be bought and sold. It really is the genesis of many later problems faith. He, that athlete may sign over power of financial attorney and give someone else the right to invest his money and to take money out of his accounts. Uh, so there are lots of things involved there, but, but with so many unscrupulous dealers out there, how in the world do you get anyone to sign up with you? I mean, if I'm a kid in college and I see somebody looking uh, with $5,000 in a car versus you with a handshake and a promise, where am I going to go? <laughs> well, first of all, the athletes we're talking about in this problem are, are a minority. I take a very strong position. I'll only represent athletes who are role models and go back and retrace their roots at the high school, college, and professional level. And as Mike knows, many athletes across the country have the help of a, a coach or their parents and scrutinize agents very carefully. Uh, at the end of, uh, for example, the process with uh, Jim Harbaugh after his father and variety of other people had, had researched my background, I probably could have been confirmed for Secretary of Defense. <laughs> Mike, it would certainly seem as though that the poor kids are most vulnerable to this. What can be done to protect them? Well, I think a lot of things have to happen. First of all, I think the problem is that the NCAA, the NFL, uh, courts, the, the good agents all have to sit down and come up with a set of rules that, are, that meet the 1980s. I think the one thing about the NCAA right now, our rules are a little archaic. Uh, we've got to be able to do some things to help the players, uh, number one. Number two, the NFL, they can sit back all they want and say it's not their problem, but it is their problem because players are going to constantly come out before their eligibility has ceased. And it's not only the fact that... Well, the that NFL almost rewards them. Well, they do, and, but the biggest problem is, is that uh, they have to see that there is a problem there, that it's a bad signal that's being sent by these agents to players. And football is different than any other sport. In basketball, you have a hardship draft. And in uh, two years ago, nine players came out in the hardship draft. Seven didn't make it. And we at the University of Pittsburgh don't have to look very far. We had three people involved. We have one player who had National Football League potential that's not playing because of his involvement mm -hmm. with Narby Walters. Lee, quickly, do you think the problem is being taken seriously enough right now? Not at all. As a matter of fact, one of the interesting parts of these indictments is it's the first time that agents have ever been held to account for their role in early signing. Previously, it was the school, the institution, or mm -hmm. the player who got the penalty. One of the quick things they could do is to supplement the income of a disadvantaged uh, student athlete on the college campus. That would certainly... I'm sorry no. I have to cut you off at that okay. point, but we are out of time. Lee Steinberg and Mike Godfrey, thanks so much for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you, babe. It's 16 after the hour now.